Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Speedbreaker, and in today's video, I quickly want to explain how to stream with OBS on Twitch.tv, and uh, especially how to get that sexy 60 FPS going on on the stream. A lot of people have been asking me this in a stream, uh, like what my settings are in OBS, and how I get the nice image quality, because I only have a upload of 3 megabits per second, which is rather low. Uh, however, the quality of my streams is pretty good, actually. Uh, it's really, really smooth. I got that 60 FPS, uh, but it's not really 720p, due to the fact that I only have very low upload speed. Um, but the quality is actually rather nice compared to some other streamers or other people that have actually higher upload speeds. So in this specific video, I'm just going to be talking about my settings, how to set up OBS for the first time for people who have never really streamed before. This is going to be just a quick go through how to get stuff set up. Now in the video following to that, I'm going to be uh, talking about some of the more advanced features like how to get like a webcam, how to get overlays, how to get uh, the current playing song uh, to display in the stream, how to get like people who subscribe to you or follow you on the stream to pop up up on the stream and stuff like that. But in today's video, we're just going to be keeping it rather basic, rather simple. So first up, you want to head over to the OBS or rather open broadcaster software website and download OBS, of course. Now, also, you want to head over to this little nice little website here, catchaexception.org. And by the way, I'm going to be putting those links here in the descriptions below. So you can basically just click on it. And uh, you want to make sure to download uh, this file here, the SPP 64-bit version of this server plugin. Now, what this does is basically it's determine the uh, best server to your location. So it just, it just calculates the ping between you and the servers. And it allows you to choose the best server for streaming. So once you've downloaded these two files here, you want to head, of course, over to the OBS installer and install OBS. I'm not going to be doing it here because, of course, I've already installed OBS. So we're just going to abort this here. And uh, next up, you want to head over to the file that you've just downloaded here, which is uh, conveniently right here. Uh, you want to copy it, go over to your C drive, Program. Make sure to go to Program and not Program x86 since the 64-bit uh, version of OBS is going to be saved in here or installed here. Program, look for OBS, Plugins, and copy-paste the file. Of course, again, I've already made it, I've already did it, so I don't have to do it again. Now just go back and fire up OBS. So once you first fired up OBS, it's going to be looking like this. There's nothing in here and it's kind of, it's kind of weird. How do I set things up? Now, basically, first up, you want to add a scene. Let's call it my stream. And within some of the scenes, you can have sources. Now, as you can see here, I can, again, right click, click on add. And I have a lot of things that I can actually add here. I can add images, text, slideshows, video capture device, game capture, monitor capture, window capture. What are all these things? Now, basically, what you want to do if you want to stream a game, of course, which is what you want to do on Twitch, is you want to add a game capture. Do not use the uh, monitor capture. You can do that as well. You can do like monitor capture and uh, add this one. And uh, basically, what this does is it just captures the whole entire monitor. So when you're playing, it actually is also going to um, broadcast uh, what you're playing. However, the uh, load on your CPU is so much higher if you're going to be streaming with monitor capture instead of something like game capture. So we're just going to add a game capture here. Let's call it BF4. And in this little tab here, you have to click on BF4 and add this thing. And here we have another nice little tip. You can click on preview stream. And on the preview stream, you can see what's going on. So this is BF4 currently, so it should, yeah, there we go. It should display BF4 right here. And if you go to monitor capture, it, it captures just the entire monitor, which is not what you want to do always, because people can then see what you have going on on the monitor and stuff, which, of course, you don't want. Um, about the, the other things here, we're going to be talking about the next video because some of these things can be rather tricky or just are more advanced things that you're not going to need for the first time when streaming. Now, I, of course, have already my own little uh, scene set up here, which is this one here. Hi, that's me. And um, let's just quickly go through the uh, settings that I've got going on here. So in the general tab, I don't think that you have to change anything. You can have like a own setting profile here, which I really didn't do because I just have my, my profile done once and it saves it. I don't know why I would name my profile. Uh, but moving on to encoding, you want to use the X60264 uh, encoder. 
I've tried out NVIDIA encoder. However, this is gonna use all of your uh, GPU power and it doesn't make the stream look as good as if you're using this one. Of course, I only in hindsight have got a GTX 680. So I don't know if this is gonna be better if you've got like a, a triple SLI uh, setup going on, um, but I'm just gonna be sticking with X264. There we go. You wanna be using CBR, enable CBR padding, use custom buffer size, and here's the tricky things. Now, these uh, fellas here are basically gonna tell you uh, what your upload speed is. So uh, if you have a three megabit upload, I have set it at 2,700, so I have a little bit of headroom there. Um, I set my buffer size to 4,000. Um, this actually exceeds this one, uh, so it doesn't really might make too much sense in the first place, uh, but I'll explain later. So basically what the CBR padding does is it always uses up all of your 2,700 kilobits or whatever you've said here, and it's not gonna plummet down. So basically, even you, though your stream is is not eating up all of that bandwidth, it's actually gonna stream at that bandwidth. So this is, this is good. Um, because it's not gonna dip and go back up and go back down and go back up, which is, is bad for the performance on the stream which, because it's gonna lag. So you wanna have a consistent uh, bit rate of upload to, to have uh, the nicest streaming quality possible. Um, and by the way, if you don't know what to set up here, um, you can go to some of, web, of the websites to, to test your upload and download speeds. Now, if you have an upload which is lower than three megabits per second, which is the bandwidth that I have, then I do not really recommend streaming because at a lower bandwidth, it's really hard to get a nice image quality on your streams. Unless, of course, you're playing something like Minecraft or games that don't have a lot of textures or are really easy games. Uh, those games you can uh, easily stream at lower bit rates. Um, but for games like FPS, like uh, BF4, Counter strike, uh, COD or anything like that, it's really not recommended to stream at a lower bit rate. Now, if you do have a higher upload, for example, you have a 10 megabits upload, you might be um, tempted to put this one at 8,000 or something like that. Now, I wouldn't really recommend doing this because a lot of people actually have pretty crappy internet out there. And even people um, on my stream are complaining that the uh, download rate would be too high for the internet to handle. So. Even though my upload is really, really poopy, some of the other people's download might be even worse. So um, keep that in mind if you set this at a higher value. If you're not partnered on Twitch.tv, it's probably not the best idea to do so. Now, next up, we've got the audio encoding here, and you should probably set this to AAC, uh, the format always to the same format that you have in your uh, Windows writer. Uh, the bitrate I set at 96, you can set it at 112, it, it doesn't really matter. Don't set it at something like that because this is going to add on top of your video bitrate. And this is probably going to lag your stream, so just put it at something like that. The audio quality is is, is okay at this bitrate. Of course, stereo. Now let's go to broadcast settings. You want to set live stream, twitch.tv of course, and um, now here comes the thing in place where you need to use this uh, server ping plugin. Uh, now, once this loaded up first, you don't know what which server to pick. And uh, the most easy way would be to just choose the closest to you. So for me, I live in Switzerland. So the closest to me is probably the one in Frankfurt. And uh, this is probably not the best server to actually pick. So how do I check this? Now, over here, you can see the server ping uh, plugin, which we've just downloaded and installed. Uh, we don't want to say, save the changes. And if I click on it, you can actually see here the pings popping up. There are a lot of servers here, and you're actually just interested in those on top uh, for Twitch. And as you can see here, uh, the server with the lowest ping at the moment is actually Frankfurt. Okay, that's interesting. The last couple of times I actually played, it was Paris. Um, but here you can actually really see which of the servers you should be choosing if you want to stream and have the best quality on your stream, or just to have the least lag on the stream, basically. And uh, for me now, now I would be using Frankfurt and this is actually gonna change all the time. So you have to check it all the time and uh, just go back to your broadcast settings and uh, go to, 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 to Frankfurt, of course. Now this here is gonna be your streaming key. And uh, how you're gonna get your stream key is basically you have to go to twitch.tv and put in dashboard. And over here, you wanna go to streaming key. And if you click on show key, it's gonna show you the uh, key in here, which I'm not gonna do right now because I don't wanna show you my key. And uh, what it's gonna show in here, you can put in there and you're gonna be able to stream. Now do never show this key to anybody else because with this key, anybody could stream on your account. Now the next thing here is get auto reconnect, blah, 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 reconnect timeout. This is really not really imp important stuff. 
Minimize network impact, I have that on none. Save file, of course not. I don't want to keep my recordings. You could you could just record stuff and stream at the same time if you're into that, but but I don't really like the quality of OBS that much to have recordings of it. So I generally just record with Shadow Play instead. Uh, you can have some of the hotkeys here, which I actually didn't assign. I don't really care about those things. You can go over to Video tab. Now here's some of the important things. Now my monitor is at native 1080p here, of course. And uh, what you want to do is you want to put the uh, downscale resolution to something like 1.5. So if you want to stream at 720p, don't just put in 1280 times 720 up here and have this at 1. Uh, what I would recommend is to have here 1920 and then downsample. This is going to give you the better performance on your PC and it's not going to eat up as much resources as it would if you would put in 720p in here. Now, the next one is a filter that it applies. Uh, if you've got a good PC, you can put it up to, to the best. Uh, if you've got kind of not the best CPU, you can put it on bilinear, but I generally have it on Lanxos or something like that. Of course, the 60 FPS. Disable arrow, you, only, you can only do that if you're in Windows 7. If you're in Windows 8, you cannot disable arrow. This is actually a really good setting if you want to stream on Windows 7 and if you want to have a little bit more CPU power and in the reserves, do disable arrow. I'm not going to be doing it right here. I actually did it before, um, but it's going to disable shadow play. So it's not really the smartest move to do for me right now. So we're just not going to save it right here. Uh, let's go over to the audio tab. Um, this is really straightforward here. Just set up your desktop audio device, your microphone. It's really straightforward. Just set it up to whatever it is and go over to your advanced settings. Now here are the things that most people don't really understand, so we're just gonna go through them um, here step by step. The first option you wanna of course check this is to use all of your CPU power instead of just uh, letting some of the CPU power go to waste. Uh, the process priority class I have at normal. I have never really uh, observed any difference from high to normal. And I've heard people uh, mentioning that if you put it on high, it might damage your PC, so we just keep it on normal. I'm not too sure about this, but I don't really see any difference, so whatever. Uh, scene buffering time, I don't really know what that's all about. I just put it on 700. Uh, I don't have this one checked. I do have this one checked. I don't know what they're meaning. Don't really matter. Uh, the CPU present here is really important. Now, um, this is usually on very fast, and if you do have a rather fast CPU, you can actually set it on faster or lower. Now, what this basically does is, if you do have a low upload speed, it still maintains a very, very nice and high quality of the image because it uses up more of your CPU power. So it's gonna use more power to compress the image and then upload it. However, if you do have not the best CPU, then I wouldn't advise to set it on faster because it's gonna make your whole system lag. Um, if I, if you can't handle where if you can handle very fast, put it on super fast. But you should at least have it on very fast, in my opinion. I have it on faster because my CPU is pretty beefy. Encoding profile I put on main. The keyframe interval you should be putting on two to be able to stream on Twitch.tv. Use CFR. Um, I don't really need these settings and these one neither, and these neither. These are basically all the important settings. Now the next tab is some of the microphone noise control. So basically what this does is it gives you here some sort of threshold. Now if I'm talking, of course, the uh, threshold should be below. So um, it's not gonna transmit any of the noise that's happening in the background. For example, me cluttering on the keyboard, or this is kind of stupid. There we go. It shouldn't really um, broadcast any of the background noise, um, but of course it should broadcast your voice. But those are pretty much all the settings that you have to keep in mind when streaming with OBS and Twitch.tv. If you do want to have that sexy 60 FPS, do make sure to use the 64-bit version of OBS rather than the 32-bit version because with 32-bit, as already said, you're not going to have a nice smooth 60 FPS stream as you're able to do with 64-bit. But those are all the things and tips that I have for you guys. Um, if you do have any questions, don't hesitate and leave them down below in the comment section and I will make sure to answer them as soon as possible. But if you did enjoy this video and or it helped you out, make sure to leave a comment and a positive rating as it helps me out a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, have a good one and until the next one, cheers.